So let me just say this um, <clears throat> because I know I don't ever really uh, say this in the video. I am a holistic health practitioner. I have a bachelor's in health and wellness. I have an associate's in health information and I have uh, four certifications <clears throat> all rolled up together that makes me a holistic health practitioner. My channel is for holistic health, wellness, lifestyle, and some beauty wrapped up in between. Also some pop culture or current events will also be wrapped up into the channel. Um, most of the people that's watching the videos, they are not subscribed to the channel. So please like, comment, and subscribe if you would like. That's fine. Um, it's welcome here on my channel. But, you know, when people click on videos, they don't go to the bio. <laughs> so nobody ever really goes to the bio. So I think I said, let me just go ahead and, and try to implement that and start my videos off with that. I also have a business. It's called Sweet and Yucca Holistic. And the website is sweetandyuka.com where I offer health and wellness products. I have candles. I have crystals. I have uh, herbs. I have supplements available to purchase to help with your wellness needs. I also have incense. Um, what else do I have on there? I have uh, like probably I think like over like 30 or 40 different products available to or available to order. Um, that anytime you want to order, you can use the code wellness for a discount off your order. And I would appreciate you supporting my business. So in today's video, we are going to talk about sleep optimization. Okay, so are you tossing and turning at night? Uh, waking up feeling more tired than when you went to bed? I know I have before. Are you, well, like I said, you're not alone. Um, it may be the time for you to rethink your sleep routine or make some changes to your, your nighttime routine. Um, in today's fast paced world, getting a good night's sleep is more crucial than ever before. After all, sleeping is a foundation upon we build, is the foundation that we will build upon our daily lives, our energy, our productivity, and our well-being. So when it comes to sleep, many of us struggle with uh, sleep, our sleeping patterns. Some of us have insomnia. Some of us are stressed out. We have irregular sleep patterns, and it makes it uh, difficult when we, to get the rest that we need when we need it. For some, the endless scrolling on social media before bed, while others, it could be just the constant thoughts of rumination about what tomorrow may bring that will possibly keep you awake at night. For whatever reason, the consequences are often the same. We ha all have fatigue. We have a decrease in focus. Just an overall feeling of being unwell, just a, just a general feeling of just not feeling your best or just being unwell could be contributed to your lack of sleep. So let's be honest, who has an experience of frustration of lying in bed at night? unable to fall asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, or struggling to go back to sleep. So sleep disorders are incredibly common and they have a significant impact on our daily lives. So the question is, what can we do about it? The most effective way to tackle sleep challenges is to establish a consistent nighttime routine or bedtime routine. This can be as simple as reading a book, taking a warm bath, practicing gentle stretches. The uh, idea is to signal your brain to let your brain, so to signal your brain to let your brain know it's time for you to wind down and go to bed. It's time for you to prepare to go to sleep. Another critical aspect is um, for sleep optimization is uh, the screen time. When we're on scrolling on TikTok, we're scrolling on Instagram, scrolling on YouTube. It's just the constant scrolling on our cell phones. Our cell phones emit blue light from our devices and it suppresses the melatonin. Melatonin is needed in order to go to sleep. So if you're on the phone and you're being exposed to blue light prior to sleep, it will make it hard for you to go to sleep because it's actually decreasing and suppressing your melatonin, your natural melatonin that's already in your body that, need, that you need to go to sleep. So the importance of that is to uh, you, overall, you just need to create a conducive sleep environment. So this means you need to take a, an assessment of your sleep environment. Is the room cool? Is it dark? Is it quiet? Um, is your bed or, you know, bed 
comfortable where you're sleeping is it comfortable do you have a mattress do you have pillows um your sheets or is your sheets too hot or the sheets too cold you know is the if you're a size sleeper with the pillow do you need to you know a pillow for size sleepers or you sleep on your back or whatever you have to take an overall assessment of your sleep environment uh <clears throat> excuse me so the sleep environment going to the next bullet point often is overlooked but it plays a significant role in our quality of sleep so you have to consider when was the last time you upgraded the mattress and the pillows a lot of us are sleeping on old mattresses and pillows they're difficult to come by you know nobody wants to really tussle with a mattress or anything trying to move it in and out the house and the bed and all those other kind of stuff because it's just not easy to do but when was the last time you got a new mattress when was the last time you got new pillows um, are you using earplugs, blackout curtains, or eye mask to block out noise and light when it's time to go to sleep? Um, by creating an environment that is conducive to sleep, you can improve your quality of rest. Furthermore, incorporating relaxation techniques such as deep breathing, uh, muscle relaxation, or stretching, or overall just relax slowly, relaxing your muscles from your head all the way to your feet. You can go into prayer or meditation. Um, you can do different techniques to calm the mind and slow down the mind to help you go to sleep. Um, also, setting a consistent sleep schedule can help regulate your body's internal clock, ensuring that you will get the best possible sleep, meaning your circadian rhythm. Okay, next bullet point. Among many tips and strategies to optimize the sleep, there's one that stands out the most or which can be impactful, which is waking up at the same time every day, even on the weekend. This may be counterintuitive because you know, we like to sleep in on the weekends. Who wants to wake up at six o'clock or five o'clock in the morning on the weekend? You want to sleep in, but by doing so, by waking up at the same time every day, it will regulate your circadian rhythm, which will also, at the end of the day, it will help trigger your brain to help you go to sleep. That's why you have to wake up at the same time every day. Um, ensuring that the body gets enough consistent wake sleep or sleep wake cycle by doing this you can experience significant improvements in the energy and productivity so looking um, to make your make changes to your sleep routine by starting to set the alarm clock at the same time every day so my own my own struggle is what I do I do give my body breaks I don't um, like on the weekend I wake up early, I don't sleep in too late, but I do wake up early. I'm still up before 10 a.m. on weekends. Um, I wake up anywhere between six and 7 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. And that that's pretty much the time that I wake up. But on the weekend, I'm still gonna be up before 10 a.m. I may sleep in a little bit, but I know Saturday comes, I'm gonna sleep till 9, 9.30, 10 a.m. I'm up before 10 a.m. Sunday, same thing. I'm going to sleep till 9, 9.30, but I know I'm going to be up before 10 a.m. So I do give my body breaks. So it depends on how you want to set up your sleep wake cycle or the, how you want to set up your routine in order to give your body more rest because we are talking about sleep here. So the more you rest, the better it is because we're talking about sleep optimization. So some things that you can go over just by assessing your sleep environment is number one you try to stick to a schedule so monday through friday you have one schedule but you also can set another schedule on the weekends you don't have to keep it consistent seven days a week because like i said we still want to rest and sleep right so you create a restful environment you want to avoid stimulants three to five hours before bed that includes food alcohol uh smoking uh, your cell phones your lights in your home you want to try to set a mood and calm yourself down and create a relaxing sleep conducive environment you want to de-stress before you go to bed if you need to write in a journal write in a journal if you want to read a book do that read a book if you want to listen to some calming music before going to bed you can do that as well they have different frequencies available on youtube that can help you go to sleep uh, if someone you want to listen to rain you want to listen to thunder sometime that helps people go to sleep then you can also listen to music as well you have to remember um okay so for the couples or not 
some people require intimacy before they go to sleep. But being intimate or being close with someone, it does boost endorphins and it boosts oxytocin, which will, which will decrease the cortisol, which will make you less stressed and will help you go to sleep. So some people, they like to have, like to have intimacy or be intimate before they go to bed. That can also help you go to sleep. <laughs> um, so back to assessing the sleep environment. Check the temperature. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Like me, I like to sleep at about anywhere between 70 to 72 degrees, either be it wintertime or summertime. I still have to have it anywhere between 70 to 72 degrees. I really can't go over 72 because to me, it's too hot. I can't sleep hot. If it's too hot, I'll never go to sleep. I have to have it cool. I, I cannot sleep hot. I, I just can't. So you have to, you know, check the temperature. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? If it's too cold, then, you know, check the thermostat. If it's too hot, check the thermostat. Make sure you're comfortable when you're going to sleep. Um, also, check in with your feelings and your emotions before you're going to sleep. Are you worried? Are you stressed? Are you lonely? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you relaxed right now? Because if you're not relaxing, you may need to do something else to help you, help get you there. Okay. Are you happy? Are you sad? Sometimes emotions or the way you feel can keep you from going to sleep. If you're worrying about something, you know, uh, try to, like we keep saying, turn, try to turn your brain off or signal your brain to go off or tell your brain to stop, pause, pick it up tomorrow because you're trying to go to sleep. Okay. So also ask yourself, are you comfortable? Ask yourself, do you need to prepare for, to go to bed or do you need something else to do before you go to bed to wind down? Um, also, sometimes everybody has different hygiene uh, practices. So I'm not saying one over the other or whatever. So that's not the video for that. <laughs> but some, uh, some people, uh, do you want to take a bath or a shower? Do you feel like you need to take a bath or a shower? Uh, baths and showers, some people find them relaxing so, and they will take baths and showers before they go to bed. If you're one of those people, fine. Um, also, do you need pajamas or do you need to change your clothes to wear something more comfortable to go to sleep or to go to bed? Or some people, they like to be nude. They don't sleep in anything. So, you know, check in, you know, ask yourself that. Do I need to just go ahead and get undressed so I can be more relaxed or do I need to just change my clothes? You know, Different strokes for different folks. It depends on who you are. People do different things. So nothing is right or wrong. You just use your best judgment. You just do what you need to do for yourself. So that way you can go to sleep. We're talking about sleep optimization. Okay. Um, also, if you need to take a sleep vitamin, I'm going to go ahead and show my supplements at this time. I have a sleep formula available on my website. It contains valerian. It contains chamomile, GABA tryptophan, lemon balm, passion flower, and melatonin. Also, taking sleep vitamins can help you get to sleep. Try to take something that's not uh, habit-forming um, and just something that's going to give you all the vitamins and minerals you need that'll help you go to sleep. So like I said, I'm going to take this time right now to show my own sleep vitamin. It's available at sleepinyuka.com. Also, um, so with doing all of this, as far as uh, checking in with yourself and doing your own self-assessment, as far as your sleep routine or your sleep environment, trying to make a conducive sleep environment, then you build your own personalized routine off of those questions or off of those steps. What somebody else do for them to go to sleep may not be what you need to do to go to sleep. So, you know, you just make sure you check in with yourself to see what you need to do for yourself to make sure you can get as much sleep as you possibly can and optimize your sleep and try to combat insomnia and stress and all the other kind of stuff. Okay, so in conclusion, <laughs> optimizing sleep is crucial for our overall well-being, energy, and productivity by establishing a bedtime routine, managing screen time, creating a sleep conducive environment, and incorporating relaxation techniques. We can significantly improve the quality of our rest. And remember, getting a good night's sleep is not a luxury, it is a necessity. So that would be the end of this video. Like I said, go by my website, sweetandyuka.com and check out my sleep formula to help you get a restful night's sleep. And that'll be it for this video.